to Studio From Home with the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia. My name is Bess and I'm going to show you a fun and simple art activity that you can do at home. For step-by-step -step instructions for this and many other art activities, please visit the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia website. Today, I'm going to show you how you can make a sculpture like this using recycled materials that you probably already have at home. This activity is based on the sculpture Joe Toe Blow by John Nesbitt from the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia's permanent collection. John Nesbitt lived and worked in Cape Breton and often took inspiration from the vibrant landscape that surrounded him. In this piece, you can really see a playful balance of organic shapes. An organic shape is an irregular asymmetrical shape. I like to think of organic shapes as essentially any shape that is not a geometric shape. Geometric shapes are shapes made of mathematical points and lines. They include triangles, rectangles, and squares. So a triangle is not an organic shape. Indeed, there are no triangles or rectangles in Joe Blow. Joe Toblo is made out of aluminum, which is a lightweight metal. To make our sculptures, we're going to use cereal boxes, which are kind of like a lightweight cardboard. To do this activity at home, you'll need some old empty cereal boxes. You'll need scissors and some markers or crayons. If you have extra color paper at home and glue, you might want to use those as well. So, to begin, we're going to start by cutting down our cereal or snack boxes. So, I'm going to just start by opening up this box. And then I'm going to cut along the folds of this box. So kind of wherever the cardboard naturally folds, that's where I'm going to cut. Now, as you're cutting these, don't discard any of these little tabs. You can use those as well. You can use all of these pieces. So I'm just cutting again wherever the cardboard has a natural fold to it. Once you have your boxes cut down into different rectangles and squares, the next step is going to be to draw organic shapes on one side of your cardboard. So this is where you can really get creative. Try to make maybe no two shapes that are the exact same, or maybe you could take inspiration from different leaves or trees or the things that you see in nature, um, but just have fun with it. Once you've drawn your organic shapes all over your different pieces, and I'll do one on this like little guy as well, because you want a variety of different sizes and shapes. You're then going to kind of cut out all of these different shapes. So, I'm going to cut this one out. Now, once you have some shapes cut out, at this point you can start to kind of color them in if you want. So you could, if you want, just use a marker and color your shapes in entirely. Or if you have some colored paper and glue at home, you could use the colored paper to cover your shapes. So for this one, for example, I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna cover the entire shape with my glue stick. I'm now gonna just put this onto my yellow paper and now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim off all of this excess yellow paper. So. Now one side of my shape is going to be covered in yellow paper. And if you want to, you can do this to both sides, you can do it to one side, color the other side, whatever you like. Now my shape looks like that. And you just keep going and do this with multiple shapes so you get like a nice kind of variety. This next step is the most kind of important step of the whole process. You're gonna take your shapes and you're gonna cut small slits into a few different places. I really recommend starting off super small. I like to make these slits by just doing two little cuts right next to each other. They're super tiny. You can always go back and make them larger if you want, but I like to start with mine really small like this. So finally, you have all of your slits cut out and now it's time to play. So you can assemble your shapes together by sliding two of the slits together kind of like so. So I'm gonna take this one and this one and pop them together. Voila. 
So you can keep going like that to create your one-of-a-kind unique sculpture. Just try playing around with it and thinking about the balance. Remember Johto Blow, that sculpture, had a lot of big shapes on top, so John Nesbitt must have really experimented a lot in order to get a good balance. Have fun with your art and show us what you've created. We would love to see what you made, so please take a photo and tag us on social media. Thank you for watching this video and stay tuned for more lessons on Sundays from Studio From Home with the Art Gallery of Nova Scotia.